So, before I can give you a job, if you look at the backboard, I have a little section that says second period. The only person who does not get a say in their job. You're going to be famous and be on YouTube. I'll get them back to you as soon as I get them back, okay? Did you look at that poster? Look up the movie. Okay. Everybody else is going to have a say in their role for the king's trial, except the king who shall be Mr. Nielsen. <laughs> the charge is not going to be bigotry, sexism, or racism, because it's based on the king, not him. So the charge is going to be treason, which is betraying your country. And it seems crazy to say, if we're going to charge the king with treason? You think like a spy who sold the Russian secrets. That's treason. You don't think the president or the king would commit treason. That's going to be the charge. Obviously, before we put him on trial, we got to know something about him, because you guys don't know anything about him yet. I will tell you this. In the scheme of causing the revolution, he is a bigger cause than the queen. She was easy to hate. She wasn't a good ruler. She was not a nice person. But ultimately, the real causes, like the high taxes and the people starving, most of that was not because of her. Okay. Now, when you read about the king's bed, you're going to say, wow, he could have easily changed things in France, and he didn't. Or you read what he eats for breakfast. Some of you are going to get hungry and say, I'm not even mad. That's impressive that he can eat all of that. Okay. So, if you go in Canvas, you're going to have the same partner. The next assignment down says, King Louis the Sixteenth sourcing. When there are this many King Louis, you cannot just say King Louis. You must specify. Because King Louis the Sixteenth got his head chopped off and is widely known as one of the worst, most impotent kings in French history. Whereas King Louis the Fourteenth is widely known as one of the best kings in French history. So you cannot just say King Louis. You must say the Sixteenth. If you don't know Roman numerals, X is 10, V is 5, I is 1. If you put a littler numeral in front of a bigger one, you subtract it. So 14 is actually XIV. Okay? I don't know when they quit teaching that in school, but most of us don't know. So all you need to know is 16. Yeah, well, because what's the Roman numeral for 50? Super Bowl L. Super Bowl L. That is boring. Because, like, 47 would be Super Bowl um, XLVII. That's exciting. Super Bowl 50 is Super Bowl L. So I guarantee they put a 50 on there instead of an L. Because everyone would be confused by the L, right? It's going to be a while, though. Because LI, they're going to think, like, Lee. What is that about? <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's how this is going to work. The first link should be a document, and if you pop that open, it should look like this. Have a shared copy between you and your partner. Get on your phone or your laptop, whatever you got to do. I'll do it. Everybody needs access to edit that shared copy in your group. Now, how you do this is up to you, but I will show you how I would do this, and then you can decide. We're going to have the next link from that Canvas assignment is a PDF <coughs> that has the sources. When you see the drunk, crazy guy, you'll know you have the right page. Here's my preferred method of how to do this. I like to take what I'm reading and put it on the left. You can do it however you want. I would take my window, snap it left. I like to take what I'm writing or typing on and put it on my right. If you like top bottom or you like different tabs and doing, do you guys know what Windows tab does? Hold up, I'm not going to ruin anything, I promise. Do you guys know the Windows tab thing? The window button does magical things. Just play with it someday or look it up. No, 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 hold Windows and then hit tab. Whoa, watch this. Hold Windows, hit tab. What the hell? Magic. Oh, 
Whoa, that's like way cool. If you like that better than tiling, here's all I'm trying to tell you. Do it your way. That's crazy. Wait, why is that? Oh. What the heck? You guys really didn't know how to do that? No. Okay. Okay. I'm not. I'm not trying to rub it in or make you feel bad, but you're using Windows 7 that's been out for a long time. There's a Windows 10 now, so you guys are easily impressed if you're learning stuff on Windows 7. Yes. Okay. Believe it or not, for the last 30 minutes of class, we're not just going to play with Windows Tab, although that is fun. Here's what I want you to do. Any system you want, you have the PDF where you can read it and see it, the Google Doc where you can type on it. Oh my gosh. If you cannot answer this first question, you fail history class because this should be an easy one. I'm about to fail this. Looking at these three depictions of King Louis the Sixteenth, which are obviously all very different, <laughs> is it possible that all of these are telling the truth, so to speak, or not blatantly lying and making these up. Even though if you look at the second and third, they're polar opposites. So with your partner, see if you can come up with an explanation of how could they be truthful or not completely made up, even though they are wildly different. So you just had a bad hair day? <laughs> That's worse than bedhead. <laughs> While drinking champagne. Does Miss Kostreva have a good sense of humor? Like, if I used her as an example, would she be offended if she heard what I said about her? Okay. <laughs> that's my that's my job though. Now when you have that many open it's not very feasible. Okay. Do we agree that it's possible that none of them are lying? Yes. Okay, at least once a week we say this. In a courtroom you're going to hear the cop side of the story the accused side, and then the truth. Like, neither one's lying, but neither one's the truth. Do you think that could be true for these pictures? Could that be true? Okay. Here's what we have to understand. First, the picture on the left. I know it looks like an octopus on his head. It is every year someone says that. He's not wearing a skinned octopus. What he is wearing, okay, is a hint... When you log into Canvas, so some of you have seen this like 10, 12 times, right? There's my hint. Ah, that is the cap of liberty. It's on the splash page for Canvas. You've looked at it probably 10 times, like you didn't even look at it today. The cap of liberty is a symbol of wanting a republic, getting rid of the king, and letting the French people have equal rights. So it's a symbol of what the revolution stands for. And it's got the red, white, and blue cockade, like the little ribbon. Okay? See right there on the top of that? That's the same thing he's wearing here. He's also making a toast. How do we know? He's holding up a bottle, and he looks enthusiastic. Like, let's party. But, well, it's because he's been drinking from what's in that bottle. Now, what does the caption say? Tim knows because we've read this in French in U.S. history class. Weird coincidence. Can you read the text on that? Vive la nation. Which means, remember, he's making a toast. When Wilson went to Paris, what did the sign say? It's the same thing. Okay, do you know? Yes, long live the nation. So, what the heck is he doing, wearing the cap of liberty, making a toast to, like, long live France? He thinks it's good just the way it is, like he's saying, like, long live France, we're strong. Okay, that would be plausible if he weren't wearing the hat. 
Why is he wearing the hat that symbolizes the revolution? Is he trying to mock him? Maybe. So he's making fun of their cause. That is plausible. There's one other plausible explanation. So he's saying it to save his own skin? Yeah. Okay. I have a different theory. Do you guys ever make memes? No. Now that the internet is kind of unblocked. President Obama is a very memeable guy, if for no other reason than his big ears. We'll see if this works. Now, there's one where he's making a toast. I'm sure some of those are not the most appropriate. Okay, let's pretend that I could edit this meme, which I'm not going to. Oh, what is going on? Okay, we can all see that, right? What if you change the words to say, "Ah, screw it, I'll vote for Donald Trump. Oh. Who's, who's a very conservative Republican, and like politically he's the opposite of Obama. Would Obama ever really make a toast to Trump and say, I'll vote for him? No. Who might make a meme showing that, though? Donald, Trump. Donald Trump's supporter making fun of Obama. So here's my theory, is what if this is like a 200-and-something-year-old meme that the revolutionaries made making fun of the king supporting their cause, like a Donald Trump supporter making a meme where Obama's giving a toast to Donald, even though we know he does not like Donald Trump. Is that plausible? Yeah, that's very plausible. It's plausible. So is your theory. Now, looking at the next one. A little geography lesson is coming your way. Okay. Booze and geography. <laughs> Anybody know what he's drinking? He's drinking wine. Uh, a special, expensive type of Straight wine. Straight vodka. Okay, that's not wine. I know. <laughs> Most of, us, most of us don't know anything about wine, myself included. I do not like wine. I never drink it. But I know this because I'm a history teacher. What's the most expensive type of wine? I heard somebody say it. Champagne, like at weddings or big parties, sometimes they have champagne. What makes champagne different than any other kind of wine? No. You can get bubbly wine. You can do that with any wine. What makes it different? Yeah, really. No. Nope. Yeah, let's take it from the guy who's drinking alcohol. Nope. Uh, champagne is made in the Champagne and French. In the oh. Region. You and your dang geography. Champagne is actually a region of France. And to be real champagne, the grapes have to be grown here. You cannot buy Californian champagne. That, that's like a double negative. It either came from here or it didn't. If it came from here, you can make it into real champagne. Now, why is this important? Because you're going to read what he drank for breakfast. And you see in here, he's drinking it and probably toasting with it. That's the most expensive type of champagne. So they're not just saying he's a drunk, crazy guy. He's drinking the expensive stuff. Does that make sense? Who would have depicted him in this way? The revolutionaries who hate his guts. Okay. Now, where do you think that third picture probably came from? The, the loyalist. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. There was no photography yet. Do you think he had an official portrait to be hung in Versailles so when he's dead they'd say that's what King Louis looked like, King Louis XVI? Do you think he probably paid the guy himself to paint this picture? And if it made him look bad, he would have killed him or fired him? No, all of these are biased, but are they necessarily lying or untrue? No. Okay, here's my example. 
You can tell Ms. Kostreva I said this because I mean it in jest, but I'm trying to give you one that I think would fit. Okay, what's something she does in her classroom procedure every day? Does she do a bell ringer when you walk in? Do now. Uh -huh. I've seen those. Yes, that's what I wanted. Okay, do you think a student might make a meme of her saying something about like, okay, kids, since class is starting, Get your do now out. You have a do now. Do it now. Because I've heard her say that. <laughs> Mocking her because she says it every day. Is that plausible? Yeah. Do you think there are students who would make fun of her or her class? Like, did you guys read Shakespeare? Yes. Okay. And they, one day she was teaching Shakespeare. Kids were misbehaving. She had a bad hair day. Her daughter was sick. And you took a picture of her. Any coincidence with real events is purely unintended. And her cat got run over. Now, take a picture of her on that day and hang it in the school and say, that's the English teacher, Miss K. She's going to look bad in that picture, right? But did you make that up in Photoshop? No, you just, that was her worst day. Okay? Then take her official school picture she paid for, which if it didn't turn out well, what would you do? Get a retake, and you only save the better one. Is that a plausible explanation for those different pictures for her? So see how that could be true for the king. None of those are lying, right? Students making fun of her. Bad hair day, just a rough day. Caught her at a bad time. Her official school picture. Same thing's possible for the king. Now, what we're going to do is read some sources about him. What kind of guy was he? Was he a good person? Was he a good king? Those are two different questions. Here's how this works. You have a source. We'll look at A. Please tell me you know a little bit about The Simpsons. Oh, yeah. If you don't, don't tell me because I will judge you. Is it Spider Pig, right? <coughs> yes, that's... We're, we're just going to go Homer Simpson. If you don't know Homer Simpson, then you don't know anything about The Simpsons. Okay, here's what this historian Mark Steele said about the king in his book. Here's what I want you to do. If he says something that makes him sound like a good guy, like I think George W. Bush is a good guy, or a good king, highlight it in green. If he says something that makes him sound like an immoral, evil, or otherwise <laughs> bad dude, or a bad ruler, highlight it in red. Amongst the king's furnishings was a lit de justice. I want this bed, by the way. A bed from which... He was at liberty to pass any law without contradiction. Louis XVI infuriated his advisors on one occasion by retiring to bed to recite a new law, because he could just make one up while he sat on his magic bed. Then, in front of hundreds of magistrates, those are judges, and peers, his friends, in a gesture worthy of Homer Simpson the fat, lazy dad who eats donuts a lot, falling asleep. So to summarize, he's like, hey, guys, I have an idea for a new law. So he runs to his bed. He says it. Boom, it's a new law. And then he falls asleep. So you should have some red in there. My first question to you is what a good king, like a fair, just ruler, have a magic bed of justice that he could make up any law he wanted whenever he sat on his magic bed of justice? No. That sounds like a guy who's going to abuse his power. New rule, peasants pay double taxes because I said so from my magic bed. I'm going to sleep. You guys write that down. Yeah, that's not a good ruler. And that's not a good guy. Unless, you know, he's kind of harmless because he just fell asleep. So... The fact that he has a bed should be read. The fact that he is infuriating his advisors. We recognize you don't always have to listen to your advisors, but if you're infuriating them, are you a good ruler? Probably not. He's making the new law, and he's passing out in a Homer Simpson-esque fashion. All of those should be read. If you don't know Homer Simpson, he's the dad on The Simpsons. He's a kind-hearted, like, he's a good guy. He's just really dumb, really lazy, and really likes donuts and beer. So it kind of sounds like King Louis 
when you read what he eats for breakfast. Yeah, I guess you could say good guy if he chokes his son. If you what? He chokes his son. Yeah, he's just, if, you're, if Bart Simpson was your son, you'd choke him too. Now, how this is going to work with your partner is we have some more sources. Same system. Green, good. Red, bad. I thought that was pretty sensical. At the bottom, you're going to pick three qualities, okay, that are positive about him and three that are negative. There are more than three of both, but they're going to be more negative probably. And then the final question is going to be, was he a good guy? Was he a good ruler? And can you come up with a historical figure, even from movies or video games, who was either a bad guy or lady, but a good just ruler? Or the other way around, a really nice, kind-hearted, sweet person, but terrible ruler. And they don't have to be real. So if you don't know all your presidents, okay, it can be somebody from the Hunger Games or from uh, Game of Thrones. They don't have to be real. But they can't be a good person and good ruler, or a bad person and bad ruler. They have to be opposites. Does that make sense? A complicated character like that. So, you with your partner, figure out if you're going to read these sources together or split them up. It's totally up to you. When you get them done, you put them in the chart and answer the last question.